Hello everyone and welcome to Off the Cuff, where the headlines come to life. Today my guest is Mr. Hassan Jabir, who is the Executive Director of Access, which is one of the largest Arab American social services agency in the country, and it is in our home of Dearborn, um, an amazing institution that does incredible work and uh, outreaches to not just only Arab Americans but to communities far and wide. So a very, very, very wonderful institution we're very proud of and we've got the executive director here with us today. Welcome to Off the Cuff, uh, Hassan. It's wonderful Thank to have you, so you here. Much. Thank you. It's, it's a pleasure to be with you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Access um, has been uh, a common household word for years and years and years and years and uh, it has, it's an institution that really just grew um, on a phenomenal level um, and has serviced so many individuals, um, immigrants, uh, individuals um, that uh, uh, were in need of any kind of uh, social service, clothing, food, uh, a whole nine yards. Um, talk to us about Access a little bit, um, its services, and uh, the passion that I know that you hold dear mm. in your heart uh, for this institution. After almost 44 years now, it, it's hard to really put it all in a nutshell. Uh, um, I've always struggled. You know, they talk about uh, the elevator speech, mm -hmm. and it's no way this, this definition or this elevator speech will fit access, work with the access as an organization. But, you know, it, it, it's been um, an amazing uh, uh, organization made of amazing people, uh, people who are, uh, are passionate uh, about service and passionate about uh, the mission of the organization. And I'm talking about board of directors, I'm talking about the community, the many, many volunteers we have in the organization. And I'm also talking about the staff, uh, the people that serve. Um, an amazingly group of people, an amazing group of people, exceptional talents and, and commitment. And what we uh, really, um, may uh, your um, people who are listening that they may know and may not know that access is not only now um, a proud Arab American organization but also we proud that we became a regional provider um, we now have offices in Macomb Oakland uh, Hamtramck, Detroit, and Dearborn. And well, it's a national organization. I know um, Chicago has has a has we, a, a we facet act, there. The, we have a network of sister organizations right. in 23, uh, 23 sister organizations in ten states, um, and and uh, it it's now access is becoming a national movement. Uh, in addition to local programs, which we now have almost a hundred programs, and we we serve um, on a yearly basis roughly around seventy thousand people, averaging uh, a million contact services every year, and you'd be proud that we we have a staff that's. Um, um, Collectively, they speak 17 languages. And I was going to say, I, I think the <laughs> wonderful thing about Access is, is it, it represents so many diverse individuals, yeah. so many ethnicities, cultures, yeah. are, are it's sort of a melting pot mm. um, for everyone. And when you walk through the walls, you mm. when you walk through the halls of Access, you know, um, mm. you know that people are being serviced across the board, and mm. uh, and that's uh, that's yeah. that's really something to be proud of and uh, and and to recognize. Mm. There's so. Uh, the, 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 the thing that I want you also to be very, and I know you personally proud of this, is the, the 
the Arab American National Museum is one of our projects, mm-hmm. access projects. And, and uh, this year, the museum received a national accreditation that only 6% of all museums right. in the nation uh, have this of level yes. of accreditation. And I guess you know that we are a Smithsonian affiliate uh, um, um, a museum, and the only museum among 17,500 museums in the nation that really documents the proud history of Arab Americans to this country and their lives and their impact on, on life here. Uh, so the, the museum has been uh, 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 growing, and this year we celebrate 10 years of, of uh, the life of this museum. Uh, Access, like we said, does, does many, uh, works on many initiatives, and um, the newest initiative, which has been on the table for years and 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 years, and, years. Um, and it's something that has been a conversation that you know mm-hmm. uh, many of us have tried to bring to the forefront um, is the uh, the box and our and, and the Census Bureau yes. um, recognizing Arab Americans as a minority mm-hmm. in this country, um, and through all these years, and and I worked with the Census Bureau back in 1980, and that was a huge initiative, and you know we we galvanized and we talked and we mm-hmm. met and we did all these things. And yet, you know, mm. it's 2015 and the conversation is still going on. But there's a milestone that has taken place, mm. um, so mm. which mm. really excites me. So talk to us about that milestone and how we got there. It is really a milestone. And, and uh, it, it's something that you're absolutely right, Siam. It, it's long overdue and it's been a... Um, a, a very difficult journey Absolutely. Uh, to be included and to be to to recognize Arab Americans and other people of the MENA region, Middle East and North African region. Um, and I, uh, it, it, speaking of history, I have to say that we need to recognize one person who have led this fight and she really considered this to be a very personal mission of hers, uh, which is Helen Samhan, who has been uh, before me on on the National Advisory mm-hmm. Board for the Census Bureau. And she was through the Arab American Institute in Washington. Exactly. And, uh, not, not only she had the backing of the Institute, but she personally personal passion. had uh, so much passion and commitment to this question. And, and she did an incredible job making the case why Arab Americans and why people from the MENA region need to be included in the, in the census. And uh, she kept this question um, and she kept probing on this for many, many years. She kept years. it alive, absolutely. Uh, uh, and we... we we, uh, I've been on the board for two years now, and... Uh, the board for the census for Bureau. The board of the census. And um, I wanted to pick up on what Helen has done. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, from day one, I considered this to be my mission. And we relied on, on making the case, and the case is, that you know that Arab Americans come from 22 countries. We're not a race. We are an ethnic group made of many races, just very similar to the Hispanic community. Um, And Arab Americans, some of us, were included under the white population uh, and that include Lebanese, Egyptians, Jordanians, and Syrians, and so forth. But other Arab Americans were included under other population, like people from Sudan. And some other countries were <laughs> some included. Common sense there. Uh-huh. <laughs> were in, were um, included under African. Um, and uh, 
even when you go see him to uh, the white population, uh, um, technically we are included under white, but when it comes to the real data, it's not there because it aggregates to white. And the other problem... Well, it becomes false statistics, really. It, it's really not only false, it, it, it's a, a violation of the law because the law, the Constitution says every population needs, needs to, to be, be recognized. counted. Mm -hmm. Needs to be counted. And, and uh, the, the, uh, when we did our own private research on this question. And when we also convince the Census Bureau to do their own in-house research, they came back saying to us, yeah, you're right. We are not including Arab American. We're not capturing Arab American numbers. And we're missing these numbers by two thirds. And that's exactly what our private research came back saying that two-thirds of Arab Americans uh, are not being included, not being counted. Uh, and um, meanwhile, there has been some effort and conversation going on between us and the other people of the MENA region. And we agreed to come together uh, and ask for inclusion, and that will include people from Iran and people from Turkey. And we uh, uh, we uh, came to an agreement with leadership from the two communities to uh, do this uh, uh, together, because we felt that this would be the best best vehicle for us to move the question. And uh, we really, when we started talking to other leadership from the Hispanic community, the Asian American community, the, uh, the Pacific Islanders com communities, um, they were in support because this was uh, what needs to be done. This is what the law says. Um, uh, and this is what's, what's right. Now, what's the implication to us? The implications are that there are no data on Arab Americans when it comes to health issues, exactly. when it comes to education, when it comes to economic buying food. trends, that and that should be a catalyst right there. Exactly, and and also uh, in terms of um, uh, federal grants to uh, communities with heavy concentrations of Arab Americans, um, we were missing on all of this, and our communities are missing on the opportunities not only to be included, but on, on uh, 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 federal grants and federal support that's needed in the communities. So Do you think that in itself might have been a reason why the delay to I, keep that sector I, out I, of the running for these grants or for these, uh, these things that can... To be honest, I think two reasons for that. Um, federal agencies are huge and bureaucratic, and they move extremely slowly. Mm -hmm. mm. Secondly... Now, how many of those people didn't know that? <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, uh, uh, um, uh, some of these bureaucrats, not all of them, uh, if if you don't make a strong case mm -hmm. backed by community and by support. It's hard to get their attention because there are, um, our nation is changing demographically and Absolutely. changing fast. Um, it's smart for us to reflect always accurately who we are as people. 
sometimes this type of thinking is not there and and it's blocked by uh, uh, th this slow moving bureaucracies um, uh, and that's why uh, engagement and people activism is so important in moving some of these critical questions and do you, do you feel maybe there was a, a huge lack of, of support in that area and of activism, of voices saying this needs to be done you know through the years? You know what, Sam, I found out that when you talk to people and they, they understand them. what's at stake, stake here, they are extremely supportive. People want to be included, mm -hmm. even on a symbolic uh, level. They want to feel that they are part of, they are a visible community. They are part of this mosaic of the U.S. So uh, even on, on this level, people want to do that. Mm -hmm. and, and they have a right to do that. But there are also some very important issues behind this. The well-being, the... the, the, the uh, uh, the sustainability of communities, the, 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 the health of communities, the economic well-being of communities, the education of communities, and these are very important. And, and you know, I would think that it would be a win-win situation when it, when it comes to these things, because mm -hmm. I, I know that the Census Bureau uses a lot of this information um, exactly. to different you know, in different areas, um, mm -hmm. knowing where to market to people, what, what their trends are, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and so they're missing that entire so, yeah. angle of, you yeah, know, I'm directing economic vitality mm -hmm. for that area. So the, it's, it's a win-win situation. They're missing on knowing where are the assets in the community. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so I, How do you purchase it, for example? Uh, I'll give you an example, and this is a, a Wayne State University study that found out that in the Detroit region, mm -hmm. there are roughly 14,000 small business owned by Arab Americans. They employ 200,000 people in these small businesses. They produce $7 billion of economic activities for the state of Michigan, economic revenue to mm -hmm. the state of Michigan in terms of taxes and economic activities. And so it's good to know that because it's good to know where are your assets in the community. It's not only about the receiving end. It's right. also about the contributions you make into society. Right, and that's why I think it's a win-win situation. Exactly. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm glad that the conversation is, is finally starting, mm. but it's a process. Mm. Um, and it is a process. So we have to ask the question first, from what I'm understanding, to see whether it's viable. So um, what, 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 what part of the process are we in right now? So the process is, and, and it is, and when I say this is a historical moment, I mean it because it's been more than 20 years. Um, and why is it historical is that now the census on record saying that we want to support this inclusion. That's Definitely on record. at first. And it came from two out of three committees. Um, and what then they went and did is they requested for additional funding this year to test the question. To be able to test the question, they need to put it in the Federal Register and solicit comments. Responses. The more of positive comments we receive up to February 1st. Is there a number? Uh, Is there a certain number? We actually have a number and we have a, um, uh, we can connect you to the website. Uh, 5,000. We, yeah. Positive comments. We need 5,000 positive comments from all over the country, and I think we can do it. I think one night I posted something on my Facebook. I got 50 people in one night to respond to this. Um, and some of them actually sent me what they have sent. But we made it easier. 
at Access, we already have a page ready for you. You just put your name, click, and they'll and send it. And it goes. It, it, it goes there. Prefabricated letter. Yes. Wonderful. Uh, and you <laughs> can so change it if you easier. want, but we're making it easier on you to, to send your uh, comments. And you can go to Access website, accesscommunity.org or nac.org or uh, Access Facebook. And we, we posted these links there and you can just fill in your name and, 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 and click to so send it. So accesscommunity.org is Exa the website. Accesscommunity.org. Okay, we'll put that it. up. Yeah. So uh, uh, let me tell you then, if we do have these five, hopefully 5,000 positive responses, um, then it's likely that the, the in 2015 we we'll, we hope to start testing the question and the way we, we it, this is done that um, the census will send their uh, uh, statisticians to uh, communities and they do uh, uh, what they call focus groups and sit down and and um, and, and test the viability of the question. They use different tools. Let me tell you why this is so crit critical. On the census, our intention that in 2020, the centennial, we hope in that 80% of res response to uh, census come through the internet. That's our goal. If this happened, this gives us an opportunity that if you click, and if our question, our category was there, if you click on MENA, then it drops and you can say Lebanese, you can say Chaldean, you really? can say Barber, you can say whatever you wanna, you identify, and it all ag aggregate under this uh, category. One topic, MENA. So it really include every one everyone and uh, so 2015 is the testing if it goes well then the census makes the recommendation to congress uh, along with other recommendations regarding other populations that there'll be changes in the centennial questionnaire and there'll be an inclusion of this question if congress approve then it will be included in 2020. If we fail now, we're gonna have to wait 15 more years before we try this one more time. Really? Yeah. So if the 5,000 positive comments don't come in and the viability, so mm -hmm. what needs to be done to ensure that this is going to go through. I mean, mm. obviously, I don't, I don't see a problem with the 5,000 comments mm. if this is nationwide. Mm. Um, but the second portion of it in terms of the, um, the focus groups, mm. now what are they hoping to extract from those discussions? This is, um, this is more of the technical uh, right. uh, phase of, of, of this. Uh, uh, I think that... At that stage, they ask the question in different ways, and they test the viability of the answers, if statistically it makes sense or, or not. So that's the technical phase, and I'm really not worried, unless if someone says, you know what, no, I changed my mind, I want to stay under white. <laughs> or, <laughs> so, <laughs> So uh, th th that the testing phase is more of the technical phase. The, the phase I'm, I worry about more is uh, when it goes to Congress. Not because, because there is, um, unfortunately, there is a growing number, and we think we have almost 70 members of Congress who really are not comfortable at all with the idea of the census. So it's not because of specifically this question, but because the, the notion of census, they think that it, it's, uh, it's Im invading privacy, which is uh, 
I don't know how you can interpret this uh, because it's in the Constitution that we need to do the census. <laughs> I can think of a lot more things that are invading our privacy rather than the census. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's important to, to, to have a count. I think it's important to realize, you know, exactly. what the habits are of certain individuals, mm -hmm. not only for services and, you know, economic, but, but for, um, mm -hmm. you know, for, for individual uh, reasons mm -hmm. where uh, you, you want to be able to be counted, you want to be able to have the different um, uh, advantages that, you know, uh, everyone else has, and and I and I think knowing what habits of certain people are create economic vitality, and so that's the part I don't understand why it's not being accepted. What's really missing in all of this that first this is the law, and it's the constitutional law. Exactly. Secondly, it's about keeping data that continues to move our society forward. Forward, absolutely. And, and reflect accurately in the needs in the community. That's what this is all about. We need to get with the times yeah. and move forward, yeah. absolutely. Well, let's hope that this process, it's, it's further than it's ever gotten. Yeah. So, um, you know, thank you for your work on this. And I know there, you know, uh, Helen Samhan, bless her, has just been an amazing uh, influence on this as well. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you continuing her work. There uh, is, by the way, I, I have to say that when we talk to the Hispanic community, our representatives of the Hispanic community uh, leadership on the census, not only that they supported and adopted uh, the question, uh, but they actually went to their congressional members. Constituents. And the Hispanic Congressional uh, 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 Caucus adopted this question among some of the next year priorities. Wonderful. So we, we, we have a huge support from, from the Hispanic leadership a huge support from the Asian Americans and, and other groups too. Uh, and I have to mention that my partner in this, um, we have another Arab American who is on the Census Bureau uh, Advisory Board. His name is Dr. Akram Khater, and he's a professor of history. And he uh, worked very hard on, uh, on the research side of, of this. And he now leads a group of Middle Eastern um, Arab American scholars who not only support him, but at this time write in all kinds of uh, uh, comments documentary. On, and documentary. Wonderful. And they actually, some of them are helping the census um, uh, um, uh, design the questionnaire in a way that is sensitive to uh, uh, Arab Americans and, and other MENA region. So uh, these people have been... Uh, well, it does, it takes a group. It takes a group of mm -hmm. people who are passionate with, mm -hmm. with a focus on, mm -hmm. on, on this particular effort. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing that we're at this point and hopefully we'll be able to move forward. Um, this has really been um, mm -hmm. uh, a dream, I think, of, of a lot of us. Um, have a box, so yeah. hopefully, hopefully that'll that'll go forward. And thank you for all your uh, your work and uh, and your passion in doing this. And and again, oh, you know, the you. whole group. And thank you for talking to us about this. I think it's important for people to know what's happening, what's going on, and and what's on the books. So oh, thank you pleasure. so much, Hassan, okay. Executive Director of Access, and thank you so much for joining us uh, on Off the Cuff. Hope you got uh, some information, and please go to accesscommunity.org and post your comments. It's easy. The letter's there. Have a good day. We'll see you soon. Yeah.